Hello everybody, Sandra Delaja here from Kyiv, Ukraine. I want to greet everybody that is watching this program today. And I want to invite you to uh, go ahead and tag your friends and family and invite as many people as possible as well. Please, let's go and share this message uh, with your friends, with everybody you care for and you think this could be a blessing too. So share, share, share. And the program today is How to Change a Nation. Uh, every Sunday I try to come up with this program, three Sundays a month, because one Sunday I'm in church, but other Sundays I try to come up with this program, How to Change a Nation. How to Change a Nation, we have done How to Change a Nation through youth. We've also done How to Change a Nation through elderly senior citizens. We have done How to Change a Nation through uh, politics. Uh, that was what we did the last time. We have done a, a number of these uh, topics, how to change a nation. But today we are going to be looking at how to change a nation through outreach, through addiction outreach, drug addiction, alcohol addiction, through outreaches that, that uh, uh, you know, have to do with people who are in drugs and uh, alcohol addiction. Well, this story started in a very interesting manner. Uh, when I, I was about to start the Embassy of God Church, uh, I had a challenge, and the challenge was that I had prayed for six months and fasted. I was only eating in the evening. So can you imagine if fasting from June to J November, not eating, just eating in the evening? Six months. I was really very determined to, have a diff to make a difference in building a a strong church, a church that will, you know, yeah, just, you know, just wanted to try my best. After fasting for six months like this, and we started the outreach, to, the, to, to my surprise, nobody showed up. At most, only seven people came. Uh, and we had given out invitations, we had made announcements, we have done all kind of things. When only seven people showed up. That was like a disgrace. Wow, shock. As a, so I discovered that prayer and fasting alone doesn't make things happen. And then, uh, uh, so I was challenging God, that you said I should do this thing. Why is it that people are not coming? So one day, uh, one lady came in, and the lady, I asked, she was looking so strange, like from the street. So I asked her, what's your name? I just wanted to, you know, be kind to her as usual. And she said, my name is Natalia, Natasha. And I said, Natasha, was, yes, she said, yes, Natasha Alcoholic. I said, Natasha Alcoholic, is that your last name? Ah, what a funny last name. Mm -hmm. I've used to all kind of last name, Brown, Button, and all kind of names. But uh, to say alcoholic, I've never heard that kind of uh, name, last name before. He said, no, that's not my last name, that's who I am. She, you know, when she said that, I said, my God, this God, he just decided to, maybe Satan or God, I don't know who is doing it. <laughs> Somebody I just decided to useless my faith, my efforts, just to laugh at me. I was, I expected no more human beings to come. I've, that's not why I fasted. That's not why, I, you know, why I fasted and prayed for all this long, for only for somebody to come up and be telling me his name is Natasha Alcoholic. That's a disgrace. I, at least bring some students, bring some normal people. How will I gather my tithe of offering? Or how will I even pay for the rent with these kind of people coming? This is a disgrace. I mean, you know, I was just heartbroken. But, you know, when I was heartbroken like that, I heard the Holy Spirit urging me to say, prophesy to her. And I began to prophesy to her that, uh, you know, you say you are Natasha alcoholic. Well, you will, never, you will not be known for Natasha alcoholic anymore. In the name of Jesus, God is going to raise you up. And you are going to be known as Natasha Apostle. You are going to be a woman apostle. You are going to be a pastor, a woman apostle. She never even heard that before. She doesn't know what is a pastor, what is an apostle. She never heard those kind of terminology before. She never been in church. So, so she just was looking at me and she said, Oh, this guy tried to encourage me. Huh? <laughs> That's what she was saying to herself. But when I got home, I was very broken. I couldn't go to bed that night. And I, that night... And that while I was standing there praying and say, God, but I have prayed, fasted six months. I mean, this is what I knew from Africa. If you fast and pray, power will show up. But when there's nobody to, to manifest power upon now, no, nobody to do miracle upon you, just you and the shears and the walls. <laughs> you know, you just see as if your efforts are useless. And then, you know, all the 20,000 or so, whatever, and bills of 
tracks that we gave out only produced seven people to show up. So all kind of discouragement that day. So I said, God, I will not go to sleep until you speak to me. At that point, I had, you know, I had uh, read the story of Moses where he went to encounter uh, uh, Pharaoh and <laughs> that one gave him the shades of his life. And he came back disgraced and he had to run back to God. So I said, okay, I will, since you are the one who spoke to me to do this thing, I will have to return back to God. So I said, I will not go back to sleep until he, he has spoken to me. So while I was praying there, I just had the inspiration that God said I should open Mark to look, I mean, Mark 12, at, I think it was 37 or something. There's a passage there where it was saying the ordinary people felt welcomed by Jesus. Ordinary people. And when I look into the Amplifier and other translation, ordinary people, they, de they mean the dejected, the outcast. And this is exactly the category of people I'm, I, I, I saw and I was crying. So God just convicted me that, you know, the ordinary people, like even the, uh, the outcasts and dejected, they felt welcome with Jesus. They felt accepted by Jesus. They felt welcome around him. And you are crying. <laughs> he said, if you, make, if you could make these kind of people, the dejected, the outcast, the unwanted, the alcoholics, the down and out, the drug addicts, if you could con produce a, con a conducive condition for them, it's like Jesus did. Make them feel welcome. Treat them like you would treat Jesus. Treat them as if that is Jesus right there. Because I was naked, you know, you have to treat me, uh, the naked is me. You have to do as if it is me that is naked. I was hungry. You have to treat me as if I'm the one that is hungry. You have to treat all those people as if I'm the one that is hungry, I'm the one that is naked, I'm the one that is in the hospital. You have to, you know, accept them. Then he told me, if you are in the position and if you are able to accept these people and love them and treat them like, like, uh, like you would treat me, if you accept them and treat them like you would treat me, he said, then if I could trust you with them, with this alcoholic, drug that is, you know, down and out, if I could trust you with them, then a day will come that I will be able to trust you also with the powerful, the normal people that you said you wanted, and the, you know, the powerful, the wealthy, and the well-to-do. But if I, don't, if I cannot trust you with the down and out, that is me. If you cannot, I cannot trust you with my image, with myself, then I cannot trust you with anything. So then it led me to another scripture in Matthew 25, where I was saying, you know, about the two people, I mean, about the two categories of people, the sheep and the goat. And the difference is either they fed, they fed him or they didn't feed the poor. Either they hungry, either they clothed him or they, they didn't. My eyes opened. And that was the day God spoke to me and said, ministry is not what you are doing. You dressed up, you prayed for six months and fasted. Ministry is not prayer and fasting. Ministry is not you dressed up in suit. Ministry is not wearing suit. Ministry is not standing by the pulpit. Ministry is not preaching the, the, the preaching from the Bible. Ministry is not trying to show how eloquent you are and how fluent you are here. Ministry is, is your ability to be able to touch people with God's touch of love. To be able to touch people with God's love. If you are able to touch people with God's love, that, man, that woman that came, she just needs your love. And you said people are... Then he told me also, you are complaining that people are not coming, right? And you blame it on people's prejudices. That these white people are prejudiced. They, they don't want to uh, go, come to you as a black man. But I tell you, <laughs> you have your own prejudices too. And they are not less than the prejudices of these white people. And this, your prejudice, is also you, you are expecting no more people to come, that, according to you students or market women or just anybody just normal people school teachers but that's a prejudice as well because you want normal people for for me that is everybody is normal people i died for everybody everybody bears my image that's a prejudice and that's the prejudice that made you to be discouraged when that woman says she's alcoholic but for me there is no difference for in people so you need to also break your own prejudices and also another prejudice is that you was actually planning that when your money finishes you'll be doing offering and through the offering and uh, then the people will be able to pay for the all well that's your own prejudice so you are more in, you are more concerned about getting in money to pay for your needs than the soul of men so you need to change you need to repent you need to you know you need to change yourself 
So that was when I broke down and I began to cry and say, I, I, you know, you, you got me, Father. You got me, Lord. I said I was going to drop, I, you know, I agreed to drop my Bible, to remove my suit, and to just go back to that. I, I was just praying that that woman would come back again. And when she came back again, then I still told her, do you know where people like you are, alcoholics and drug addicts? She said, yes, yeah. there are many of us in town. There are different places she said, begin to take me there. So I began to go with her to go and see all these homeless people, drug addicts people, and began to pray for them. She would testify, I would pray, and let's see the result today. See the video, let's go ahead and look at the video. Through that woman, over 40,000 people came to our church. And she's now an apostle in, in, in Germany. Through that one woman that I was crying, that you know, she, you know, that it was bad news, and all the people who are looking good that came later on, they are, not nobody has been able to perform what she has been able to perform. The video, the the video, another pakaza nizal. So, then it's this eighty minutes. We also went. Sorry, guys. We're going to get the video out. So you will hear the story of this woman, Paja Austin. They said, they said, you know, period. That's the lady right there, Pastor Boss. Period, period, yes. The problem of drug addiction. This problem is a problem of each of us. Because these people, they are around us, and us and our close ones can become the, sacri the, the sacrifice, the victim of it at any time. Though they are the victims, the victims of indifference. The drug addiction is called the plug of this uh, age, and there is only one vaccine of the, against this disease, and this is the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And those who are generously giving out the recipes against this uh, disease are the followers of a wonderful person, Pastor Natalia Patapaeva, and we would like to invite this great woman to this stage, Pastor Natalia Patapaeva and her team. And right now, please let us give great glory to the Lord for this wonderful woman, for that great work that she is doing. And indeed, these results and these amazing lives, saved lives, we have never seen so much of them. So let us meet with great applause. Great apostle. Meet her. She is worthy. And God, who is moving through her, is worthy of this praise. So she's coming with all these guys that are coming with her. All of them are drug addicts, former drug addicts. These, these are all Let now ministers. Them. Let us meet them. Let us the, meet them with The people who are coming noise, to the stage. More applause. They are not the drug addicts that are being treated. These are the pastors now, the leaders or the businessmen or the people who have, yeah, who have, yes, yes. Here it is, God's glory, amazing quantities of people. Let us give them more applause. Let us meet them, greet them warmly. These are disciples right now. Much more than this, but uh, just 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 the presentation. So she put it. She, they put those, those things they are holding is like a train. It's like a symbol of Names a train of, of life. Rehabilitation, co-addiction, refugee towns, ch street children, sports, art, and so on. She was Thank pastoring you. a church here of 3,000 people Thank you. before she traveled In out. In 1994, according to 
the statistics of the Minister of Interior Affairs of Ukraine. Ukraine is taking the This one is one of our pastors. On she is not the one here. She is the one who was dancing with Pastor Bosse. But this is one of our apostles. I mean, one of our pastors. These are all our disciples. So they are doing the presentation. And the woman is Natalia Patapayeva. This way, the social movement of the international scale of the group was started, this. and the movement of rehabilitation. Within the 16 years of her activities, more than 10,000 people from different cities and countries underwent rehabilitation and received freedom from different kinds of addiction. So, stop. So, she just, at that point, stop. 10,000 people had been set free from drug addicts. Just, those are just the drug addicts. Apart from drug addicts, they have their relatives. They call them co-dependents, you know, that are also set free. So, by the time you put the relatives... And the alcohol addicts as well. Ten, you know, that's why forty thousand people came to church yesterday. So these are just drug addicts. Ten thousand drug addicts that she has come to the Lord. Okay, go ahead. Centers of rehabilitation of God's embassy works by the program The Way to Freedom. Twenty-five representatives so, of international fund of Natalia. She de developed a a curriculum, a program that is called The Way to Freedom for Your Family. Yeah, so that is a program of working with drug addicts and alcoholics. So uh, if anybody needs that book, I think we have the book here. But besides having the book, uh, we also have the books on the internet. So the book is also on the internet. It's, it's uh, yeah, uh, Road to Freedom to Your Family. Yes, go ahead. Patapaiva has been started, including three in the United States, Six in Germany and also in Russia and Belarus. The pastor to the military, Felix, got me pushed there as military. Disciples of Natalia Patapayeva have been awarded by the Minister of Interior Affairs of Ukraine for active participation in fighting against drug addiction and drug corruption. The tenth and the most in the main awarded person in this list was. So what she's saying is that there are nine, nine people who have received national award of Ukraine because of the work that they have done uh, for the salvation of people from drug addicts. And this, can you imagine the government is crucifying me, but my disciples, they don't even know they are my disciples, they are, they are getting national awards. <laughs> <laughs> Nine people from our church. National award. If you know what national award means, that's like, you know, national awards. And I am been been tried over the years. <laughs> okay, that's it. The award for working against drugs and drug corruption. And this is only a short list of everything that has been done in this direction within the 16 years of Gatsambasu Church. Moreover. 45 graduates of the Center of Rehabilitation, the disciples of Natalia Patapayeva, today are pastors of God's Embassy Church. I believe that right now is the time. The time has come and let the representatives of this movement who today are actively working in these directions tell a little bit about themselves, the representation of fund of Natalia Patapava in the Parosia region, Ukraine. Hello. For today, within the six months, 30 people, we have 30 people in a rotation center. In six months. Also, he, every week we embrace at least 10 people who. 10 people uh, every week. That's just one person, this guy. Letters of gratitude within a year from the social ministry of our city and also from the security service of Ukraine in Zaporozhye city. They are thankful for us uh, participating so actively in solving this problem. 
do prevention works in um, schools and colleges. Now, if you people know what it means to get people from the streets, to get those people who are drug addicts, alcoholics from the streets and make them stable in one year, 100 people or 30 people in you know, six months, even one. If you have one in a year, it's a big work. But here we have like, on this, these are just little, little centers. There are 300 of, or almost 400 of those kind of centers. Okay, go ahead. Yes. Most important, the office of our charitable fund uh, is in the very building of uh, the uh, security ministry of Ukraine, the KGB. <laughs> so, so what he's saying is that the KGB opened their office and gave them a uh, place to be doing rehabilitation there because the KGB couldn't even cope with drugs, with drug addicts. So they gave them a building and hosted them and said they should use their building. Just, just give us answer. Just, you see, that's what one of the ways we could change a nation. When you are able, when the church is a church, you are able to bring solutions to what even the government cannot bring solutions to, what medicine cannot bring solutions to, what um, the whole world cannot bring solutions to. But when you bring the solution, even the government, they have to, they, they have to raise up their hands and say, we cannot do anything about it. This is real. Yeah, yeah. go ahead. Come to that building and uh, to, you know, people that have been convicted and, you know, and the, this is the very place where we used to be brought in in coffins. And <laughs> Stop. And is, is, right now, she is saying, that she is saying that that place, that KGB office, I mean that building, that they used to arrest us and bring us there in uh, handcuffs. And instead of bringing us there in handcuffs now, they are, give, they are preparing everything for us to just do anything we need to do. Because when you display the power of God to bring deliverance to people, you know, you convert people to Christ and, you know, their lifestyle change and they cannot deny it, you subdue, you, you, you get respect from any government. Help there. Kiev region, go to uh, about a half a year ago, we started a representative, a representative office of the charitable fund. We embrace all the schools and colleges, and we uh, do. You see the way they work. Trainings. Stop. We embrace you. They cover all schools in their city and their state, all schools and colleges. So what do they do? They go ahead and make a list of all the schools, then write letters of permission, come with their stories of their lives that I was a drug addict. And the, every school is struggling with that. You know, violence among young people, they don't know what to do with them. So they write and say that we want to help because we have gone through this ourselves. And we have the program. Look at the program. So that's how they, because nobody has another alternative. The alternative is prison, but they could make them to function. And the students listen to them because they listen to their life story and they said, wow, you know, you don't want to become like that. So that's how they get gain entrance into all the uh, schools and colleges. Yes. <laughs> and we also went to the uh, public, uh, to the lobbies of the city, and the mayor has, has been the, the head of, of this uh, city for 14 years. All the decisions and laws have been done for him. And right now we're, we're breaking the system, and they cannot do whatever they have been doing uh, in the name of the city, but it was wrong for the city. And I don't know if you got that. So what is saying that they have started a, a political activism, lobbying, or a political movement that make them to become a part of the city council. But in the city council, the mayor had controlled that place for 14 years, kept on being elected because he had got his own people. So they are breaking that hegemony of 
the political class that are just corrupt, that are just using corruption. So, you know, people are given the boldness, not just, be, so, so it's not just a former drug addict anymore. Now he's a pastor. It's not just a pastor, he's having a political movement, not just himself. He brought 26 people into the council. They became a political force. From being in the street, this guy that was just talking, this guy with the stripes, he was dying in a, in, he was on drugs, so much on drugs that he couldn't walk anymore. He couldn't, he was just using drugs, he was about to die. And somebody called another couple and said, there is this man, dying here, we don't know what to do with him. The hospital rejected him, they said he's going to die. And they drove at three o'clock in the night to find him. They picked him up, today he's a pastor, political leader, and all that. If that person had not gone, that there's a man here dying in a village somewhere, the hospital have rejected him, he cannot work, see what we became. Okay? How to change a nation? Of course, we cannot tell you saving about the work of every representative office of the fund. So let us move on to the next car. Drug addiction is not only a disease; it is also an active criminal activity. And 70 to 80 percent of drug addicted are in prisons. And right now, I'd like to because they just put them in prison; they don't have solution. To them but we have solutions. Tell us how the center of rehabilitation works in prisons. So we go to prison. They go and find people in prison too, and go and save people in prison as well. Hallelujah. We are going to embrace all women. Uh, prisons in Ukraine. We started from Poltava region, Ukraine. So can you imagine stop covering regions. all prisons for women in the country? That is for purposeful driven. That is purpose driven. That is being purposeful. Okay. We started with the program of Pastor Natalia. Stop. Program. Stop. You see the lady near her? The lady in black, the black in black, and with black hair and black shirt. That is the senior pastor of Pastor Christina. Huh? You know, I told you that Pastor Christina was in the seventh level, right? Yes. But she is on the fourth level, our pastor, the lady. She, but she is not even the one talking, you see. Because the one talking is on the third level, higher than her. Huh? <laughs> if Pastor Christina is even nowhere to be found, she might be somewhere there at the back. It has to, for you to know the levels of this, you know, of the you know, leadership and the deep, how deep it is. Okay, go ahead. The way to freedom. And in Ukraine... And that's Pastor Natasha I'm talking to, the person who started it, the alcoholic, Natalia alcoholic. That, that we have in our country, because women in prison is very scary horrible thing they have no perspective they are deprived from their children this is what we have taken responsibility for so thank you pastor natasha for your program that sets women free all around prisons yes these are women prisons but now i would like you to tell us about the work in men's prisons we started rotation center in the design see stop is this our to change a nation through one woman. I got her saved. You know, I taught her how to discover her calling. She discovered her calling. I stepped her a little bit. We were going together. Then she became the leader. She started developing other people. The rest is story. She's not even standing up on the stage to say anything. She's just sitting down there looking at the work of her hands. <laughs> how to change a nation through drug addiction. One person could lead to the salvation of a nation. Okay? And uh, we conduct uh, groups of rehabilitation there and within the time that they've been doing this, about 200 people have gone. You see Pastor Christina at the back there? You see? <laughs> of our work and they already serve as leaders and doing the same work. So you see, they have stopped she is just just said in men's ministry in men's prison the one she is overseeing he is overseeing 200 pastors in prison men okay go ahead 
And so they, when they leave the prisons, they are already ready leaders of rehabilitation centers. They don't go back into drugs and criminal activities, but they leave prisons as leaders to help other people to go through rehabilitation. Yeah, what we we'll do, we we'll do Bible schools for them in prison, so that by the time they come out of prison, they are leaders and pastors. Of land for Jesus. You see, stop. One of the, I'm going to do how to change a nation through prison one day. One of, that's one of the most effective ways to save a nation. Because they're already confined. They don't go anywhere. They don't have the distraction. You remember the servants? The, yeah. serv the servants, the people who are genius. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the reason is because they are not distracted at every other yeah, thing. Yeah. Only that particular place is working their head. So when these people are focused in prison, you make ministers faster. Because here in freedom, they have children, they have new wives, they have Uncle Sam, they have. But in prison, they are just sitting down there. And you have, you know, it's just like being on HMT. Yeah, yeah and train them. That's why we do Bible schools in prisons, yes. Well, how do we do this assignment from Pastor Sunday? Let us see what our graduates of rehabilitation centers do. This is Cherkasy region, Ukraine. Let them tell So these are facts. These are proof. Not talk. Not theory right now. Go ahead. Hello, dear church. It's a great honor for me to stand on this stage and represent this ministry. 40% of land should belong to the Christian world. How can we take this land? God is not going to give this land to us unless we are working Stop. on it, unless it is useful to us. Stop. I don't know if you heard what he said. 40% of the land in the country. That was the vision I gave them. I cast you know, I, I also planning to do something like that in Nigeria, 20% of Nigerian land. So here we say 40%. And you see the idea, 300 cities, smaller cities, and these are the people, what we do, we go there with about 20 or 40 people, it goes to 200, 300 people, and then in every place. And because there are a lot of villages that are abandoned, because people move to the city. Yeah, so from there, we just create our own, we take over the city, villages and create centers and begin to bring the kingdom of God in 300 centers all over the country. So we call them cities, cities of refuge. We bring all these drug addicts to those places and we begin to develop them. They get married there, they have children. So they begin to raise up new generation of people. That's what we call cities of refuge. But on the values of the kingdom of God. That's it. God gave this revelation to Pastor Sunday. 300 refugee towns, we, 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 we received this and we started doing this. We read and received this revelation, just start doing it. So we didn't know how it's going to be, but we just started doing it. So today is a year that has passed when we started a center of rehabilitation in Cherkasy region, Ukraine, and we plant refugee towns over there. People are going through rehabilitation in those towns and raised as leaders. 40 people have finished the rotation, 30 people are serving. And we go into agriculture, we develop farms and uh, animal farms, we conduct prevention works, we have basketball, football teams, we influence uh, the villages around us. All praise be given to God. And thanks to educational retreats with Pastor Sunday, we believe we will reach even more. Valera didn't say that this center uh, is, uh, you know, doesn't have to be supported financially for, by anyone else because the work they do supports them. <laughs> the agricultural Self sustaining. Work Let's give praise to God. The problem of addiction is not the only problem. It has a very close relative, which is the co-addiction problem, the problem of parents, wives, and children. You know, frankly speaking, it is, you know, I feel so sad when uh, when they call them, the co-addicted are called, well, those, you know, the mothers and, and the relatives. But, you know, because of the pain that they have felt, when they understood that you can never 
solve this problem only within your family. It will not bring the proper result. And therefore, those so-called mothers, you know, mommies, they take great responsibility. And let me tell you a couple of words about some of them. For instance, Natalia Kalamietz. I am a director of a social organization, Heart of, of a Mother, which unites mothers of all convicted and imprisoned people. And now, frankly speaking, while our children are working... So, stop. So what we do is that she, as a child, we, we find, we look for parents of our relatives of people who have uh, people in prison. Because when they are, you know, so that's another way to reach out to people. It's because a lot of people are in prison and they are hiding it and they don't they are ashamed of it. So we begin to minister to them. They get saved and through them we we'll turn them to ministers as well. We don't just make people get saved and come to church. We make them get there to discover their own calling. We make them know that they are they are created, they are called for something, they are supposed to do something, they discover their calling and then we release them to that area, especially the area where they are coming from. If they are coming from the problem of people being in prison, well, that Satan tried to kill you through that. Why don't you use that as your platform to face that problem and begin to counter-attack the enemy? In the wrong ways, we are all deserving. We influence colonies and prisons. There is this one where we raise a center of rehabilitation and we hold trainings and workshops and the same people that are uh, finishing rehabilitation centers are holding those trainings. And our organization is already a member of a lobby at the management of department of uh, the punishment yes. department of Kiev and Kiev region. You, know, you remember I used to come to yes. Leonid Mihailovich, uh, the, the, the mayor of Kiev, is giving us his support in, in doing our work. So the, the mayor they are talking about, the person they are talking about is the mayor of Kiev, but now that was then that he's supporting them as well. But he's a member of the church, of our church. Go ahead. With the village city, also Ukraine, they have started a trust line, they have started a... So one of the things they do is what they call a trust line. What do you call that a line? A trust line, you call it too? In, huh? Emergency calls, where anybody could just call. Hotline, yeah. So they create their hotline. If anybody, all over the city, all over the country, if anybody is in drugs or in addiction or any problem, they could just call. So that's one of the tricks and one of the ideas to get to know because somebody is suffering somewhere yeah. so but when they have a hotline and you, you, are, you are the one in charge you can pick them up that way yep and also a consultation office and then they have the consultation centers in the city say, as well. right okay that's that's what they do and i also like to tell you how the co co addicted people are working in uh, Galicia District, Kiev. Yes, I represent the Rehabilitation Center for Co-Addicted. On the basis of this Rehabilitation Center, we started a social organization, children and parents. The purpose is to work through social ministries and uh, organizations with crisis families and also work with children and parents in schools and colleges. We have, we have uh, formed this organization also in, uh, only in the end of the 2009, but we have al already started work in four schools and about 600 people has visited our workshops and these are children and also plus their relatives. Of course, most will work with um, parents of those children and we are developing a program that is going to change the mentality of parents of our children. 300 Christians okay, needed stop. to change stop, the stop, 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 stop. temperature. Okay, that was then. All right, so this is uh, a, 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 the influence of saving me crying at first about this lady that God brought to me, and I was thinking God was punishing me. But when you are responsible and take responsibility and you disciple and you do your best, this, see what will happen from one person that I thought was a waste that I thought was, well, why should God bring an alcoholic to me? I mean, sometimes our expectation 
is different from God's expectation. And now, like I said, she alone, through her ministry alone, 40,000 people joined our church. And she's an apostle now. She's, you know, started churches in all over the world. She's started 300 churches. And, yeah, so maybe you guys would like to say anything. Okay. I'm going to put it on. Yeah. As a microphone. Anyway, by the way, if anybody at home also would like to call, if you are watching this program right now, you would like to call and contribute, you know, you j just the normal way. Go to Facebook Messenger, look for Move Agents, one word, Move Agents, and uh, write that you would like to call and contribute. Well, this is how to change a nation through addiction, through the addictive addiction ministry. Go out and, you know, then train them and set them loose. And, you know, there is no limit to what God can do. Yes. This this is like you might want you might want to stand i guess oh okay this is yes. like uh, ah no no i think you need to sit, sit down yeah just for you to, yeah we okay. can see you, yeah yeah so this this is like a practical um outreach something that i was seeking because I, we have got the same problem in the uk okay. with, with drugs and the government they they don't know what to do yeah, and the prison, the the prison, nobody knows what to do. The prisons are full. Yeah, and yeah. the same problem everywhere. Yeah, the prison minister is 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 cracking his head. He doesn't know what. <laughs> <laughs> he what doesn't to, know what to do. Yeah, so so this is a real solution to. Yes. To, to and uh, if you can, I don't know if they, uh, you got the book from Pastor Christina. She also has a book now. Yeah. How to work with addiction. And uh, there people, yeah. It's, she, she said she's translating it yeah. in oh, April. Oh, she's not in English yet? Yeah. Not they've yet. Done okay. They've done, they've done it in English. They have the books now. Oh, Pastor uh -huh. Natasha. Uh -huh. You didn't offer Natasha's them the books? Ah, okay. For rehabilitation. Yeah, they're like English. Because they don't know they have in English. No, Pastor Christina. Not just Pastor Christina. Uh, the one you are using. Yeah. Oh, tell them. Yeah. No, no, not. Okay, some girls, but oh. some don't know. Oh, okay. You don't know. I right? didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. So bring the game. Okay. Bring more after this so that they will have more books. All right. Yeah. Oh, thanks. So this is a very real solution. Yeah, it's a very real strategy of yeah. changing the nation. Yeah. Especially if you have the burden for it. Yeah. In our church, what we do is that we let people know whatever your burden is, that's your platform. So this is just a platform because that is the burden she had. Yes, yeah, where she was coming from. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I know that person. Thank you. Too. Yeah. Um. I I was just thinking how we can actually work with. I've got. I know there's a co couple of people that have reached out to already um, into the prison ministry because that's one area I was looking at. And um, but I think from what I've seen, it appears that the strategy and the system you've put in place here is what the was they producing have, the result, right, yeah. Yeah, what yeah, producing the result yeah. and they don't have it there. So I was yeah, just thinking don't. how can we actually work with these people? people very who very easy. People like Pastor Christina has already connected with you. We have other people in Europe and here also who might not be speaking English, that is a challenge. But they are ready to you can invite them to your place to England or you can bring, come here and be trained by them. They would give you the strategy, the structure, how to set everything up, and to be able to make, to be able to take people from zero to the highest level. Okay. Because I was thinking, say that yeah, either we maybe invite her. Yeah, she can even come down for a week, yeah. do a training, do a training and train teach them. people, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <clears throat> what I want to say is that um, I believe um, Pastor Natalia, right? Yes. Yeah, she's got a structure which she's going with. She's got a structure for the program of rehabilitation. Yes. That could be put into like a syllabus. Yes. That anybody could be followed. So yes. if the structure is there, it should be more developed into a syllabus. Yes. That anybody who is interested to do this, uh, reading the book and seeking the knowledge, you should be able to follow that syllabus to go through. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, the problem of addiction is a very, very, it's our number one problem in Ireland. Wow. Yes. Uh, and when I discovered this, I, I decided to go to the college to go and do a, a master's program in addiction. Oh, yeah. But uh, I have to stop after the second week hmm. uh, because I discovered that uh, 
Six out of our seven lecturers are addicted themselves. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking of addiction that is very obvious. Wow. You know, that's, that's some addiction that is not obvious. I discovered the professor themselves, they need deliverance. <laughs> so they have I think one instead of going to university for four years or so in Ireland, yes, one week or two weeks, two weeks of training proper yes, here with some of our own disciples. They will make it happen for you. Our government has no solution, and uh, the colleges too has no solution. Mm -hmm. So I believe this is the right answer to our problem. Wow! Thank you. I think uh, in um, in our country, in France, we have also some problem with young people. Uh, prisons. Uh, we are more people every day going into prison. Going into prison because of uh, uh, alcohol, drugs, drugs, and all sorts of things. Hmm. And sometimes, even in some churches, uh, even a child is grown at the church, it, don't, it doesn't prevent him from, from becoming a drug addict. A drug addict. Hmm. I think, uh, talking about prisons, with your program, we can build strong people yes. who are in prisons. Yes. Yeah. Our church was able to, was able to, in general, all in total, touch seven thousand people, bring seven thousand ministers out of prison. Mm -hmm. Yeah, seven thousand people who became ministers just by being in prison, by setting up a system for them. Everything here is about system. We set up system that works, and you know, trains them. And yeah. The question I want to ask: How can we like? Okay. How can we sell this idea to the government? He's beginning to talk. First of all, you have to understand it, the concept very well. Uh, that's why you have to really, if you are interested in this, you have to get together with some of our people to train you, to talk to you more, to get the book in your hand, you read it. So when you understand the concept, and we have the proofs, video proofs, this one, many different proofs. You can present to them that this thing is working already somewhere in Europe, mm -hmm. and we have the program here. Let them examine the program, let them go through it. And uh, that might be the way to start. That's all right. Thank you very much. Is one no case? OK, any other person want to share anything about that? OK. Well, so that is uh, Pastor Natasha. You didn't get to see Pastor Natalia. Eh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you just saw her sitting down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but if, if those who will come in, maybe in February she will be here. I don't know. It's possible she will be here in February. Or she will be, but for, she, for sure she will be here in April. She's now in Germany, but she will be here in April for sure. So this is uh, how to change a nation. How to change a nation through different platforms, through your passion. Even if you are the only person that is left in that, I mean, that is a Christian in that city, you can discover your passion, you can work on yourself and build a system, turn it to your platform, you know, convert or touch one person like I did with this lady, in the power of one. But if you get 10 people and train them to discover who they are, they are calling, and then you help them, you empower them, and you help them to become who they, God wants them to become. You, know, you cannot tell. There is no telling of what God could do through that little sacrifice. But the way we are practicing church these days in Africa and these charismatic churches is the opposite of the way church is supposed to be practiced. Because they are practicing church as if everybody just come and sit down, listen to the pastor, go back home. No, no, no. If it is the way we are practicing it here of empowering everybody, allowing everybody to discover who they are and putting fire under them and helping them to really go and build their own platform. You see, they are all not talking about me. They are talking about Pastor Natalia because it's a ministry. Yeah. They are, they, she is their pastor. She is their spiritual father or mother. She is, you know, she is the, they are the fruit of our ministry. That's how everybody in our church has their own ministry. If you will not be afraid as a leader to let everybody have their own ministry and release them and even teach them and train them to be effective, the kingdom of God will only stand to gain as a result. But if you just want to build your own kingdom, then the kingdom of God will suffer. So that's what we have seen. And these 40,000 people, they are not always, they are not just in our church. They are everywhere. 
but they have been trained, they have been brought to God, they are in Orthodox Church, Catholic Church, our church, different other churches, but they have been set free. They are God's children right now. That's what matters. But if you just want to build your empire, then God's kingdom will have to suffer. So, but the key of growth is in empowering everybody around you. Don't just make them. So if you, have, if you are a pastor of 10 people, those 10 people must know their spheres of calling. And you must help them to get to their land of calling and have dominion there. Bring the kingdom of God, the influence of the kingdom of God to that, kingdom, to that, to that sphere of life. You must, uh, they must have a passion they are living for. They must have a, a, an energy, the, the calling that they want to give their life for, which include their, their finances and their income and their energy, their time. They must know that they were sent here to this world for something, for a purpose. And if they are sent here for a purpose, it means that you must, they must discover that purpose. And when they discover that purpose, then there is something to live for. But when they don't, then you don't help them to discover the purpose, just making them to come and sit down and listen to you how smart you are and clap for you. <laughs> That's the only thing you get. But the kingdom of God doesn't grow as a result. All right. If there is nobody else who wants to say anything, I would like to say that. Uh, you like to say something? Okay. I would like to say, meanwhile, that you can get our books on Amazon. Uh, you can buy them there or read them for free on Kindle Unlimited. Uh, but if you want to get them cheaper than on Amazon, you can also write to our office here by writing to dssbooks at gmail.com. Then it will be more cheaper than on Amazon. Just send us the letter and we'll be able to give you a better price. If anybody wants to call into the program, I mentioned it already, go to Move Agents, Move Agents, Move Agents on Facebook, look for Move Agents and write, don't, don't call, just write that you want to call. If you write, then we'll be able to call you back. Yeah, okay, Pastor Olu, I just, that. Yes, sir, please, uh, how can we deal with the language barrier? Because uh, I'm interested in the training. <laughs> we get a translator, interpreter. Okay, sir. That's the fastest way. Oh, you are interested in what? You didn't finish I, your I said I'm interested in the training. Because this is, this is number one problem in Ireland. In every sector, this is the number one problem. I'm Pastor, Pastor, uh, Pastor Natasha told me that she wanted to organize a... Pastor Natasha, can you come, please? Because maybe some people also, not just you, maybe some people watching us at home who might want to join some training that you want to do. No, you have to come this way. What, what is it you wanted to organize? You wanted to organize Skype training or... Conference training. Uh, uh, with uh, Pastor Christina. With Pastor Christina. Oh, okay. I think. Yeah. Yes, Pastor Christina. Yes, with Pastor Christina that you already know. You know. Okay. So we no will organize no online me. programs uh, of the program of rehabilitation program. So. You can, uh, you, can, you can uh -huh. follow this program sure, 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 so you can see the, the point, the sense of sure, the sure, sure, steps sure, in these programs. So how can they, like for example, there are people watching us on live broadcast now. How can they join? You don't know yet, right? Uh, it uh, will be organized the page, special page. Uh, for this program. And so and you can you can join this page and on this page uh, y you know you can follow the online programs. So I think when this page will be created we will let you know with some way we will invite you to join this page so you will see mm -hmm. and you can share this page with other people and maybe also we will put uh, you know uh, the link of this page in so the comments. So it's going to be like a what? Like like training? Yes, like it will be online training. Training to work with drug addicts and alcoholics? Yes, yes. It will be like rehabilitation program, the steps. Okay. So the people that wants to go through a rehabilitation program, they can watch every video as lessons, as steps in this program. But can they write to somewhere that they are yes. interested? Yes. And also they can comment, they can send uh, messages 
uh, to this page if they have problem or some questions or they will because need consultation. Because people who are watching right now mm -hmm. and will be interested to join that. Yeah, class they when can. It they can now. They can write on the comments. The comments, okay. Yeah, right. If you are watching this right now and you are interested to participate in how to work with drug addicts, homeless, or you know, people who are smoking or drug addicts or alcohol. You know, any kind of addiction. If you are interested to learn how to work with them, just write in the comment section right now, session, that, I mean, section that you want to, just on your comment, that you are interested. So that when we start the program, an online program to train uh, workers f to work with these people, we will be able to contact you as well. So just write in the comment that you are interested, right? Yes, yes we will. Now we will see your comments and we will... Uh, take your names and we will add you to the page and write to you back so excellent yes yeah, so and it's only beginning good thank you thank you thank you, thank you. there's a, there's a new problem that we are facing in the uk okay there's um a sort of new synthetic drug that they are making called spice they call it different names yes yes we have them we, it, it, oh you have it here yeah just a little yeah. So someone, yeah. when they take it, someone will be like a zombie. Yeah. They can stand like that for hours or something. Yes. <laughs> so it's it's quite a problem, and uh, no one seems we're to have a solution. Thank God, we are very effective in those days. Yeah. Very effective ah. with all of them. A step further away from the Western world to Nigeria, since we are looking towards the um, transformation of our country. Yeah. Um, in trying to do uh, set up some of these programs, uh, rehabilitation. It yeah. Is it is dro for drugs or for alcohol? No, just for the poverty situation. Poverty situation. Okay, okay. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, you are right because yeah. I'm going to do. You remember we here we spoke about doing centers, cities of refuge. Mm -hmm. We are going to probably come with to Nigeria. It's one of my plans to come to Nigeria with those kind of plans for cities of refuge yeah. all over Nigeria. I want us to, to start at least a thousand of those cities yeah. where we could have up to 5,000 people living. Yeah. Yes, and they're developing, they're doing agriculture, they're... You know, because I'm not just for ad drug addicts, but in Nigeria it will be for poor people mm -hmm. or people who don't have skills or people who are unemployed. So instead of people who are unemployed, for you to get them to the city to be coming to look for office job, but yeah. why don't you create a city like that, mm -hmm. whereby you know, anything that is needed in the city will be there. Exactly. They will be able to do skills, skillful things, and uh, you know, and and uh, hands on, yeah, and they are all employed and building their family and yeah, yeah. Those are some of the things we we plan to do. Cool. So, like, like some of us that have, some of us that um, are sometimes finding ourselves jumping, um, I, I discovered that um, the people you are trying to reach, they have their expectation, and sometimes their expectation okay. is different from <laughs> that is interesting from you are. I am yes. So my question was, what are the techniques on how to balance? their expectation, not disappointing them, and at the same time be able to insist on your own big picture. Because what I say that is when you show up for any reason, their instant expectation is money. Mm -hmm. You don't have the money. You are, you are not coming to them mm -hmm. because you have money, but just because you think you can do something. But most time, when it becomes that um, you are not giving them instantly what they want, um, it becomes a challenge. So the the idea of I mean the the technique of being able to balance their expectation and at the same time focus on your mm, on your your big picture. Um, is 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 a is, is a challenge. Well, that's very well thought of, very very thoughtful uh, uh, suggestion. Well, what will I say? Mm, I've discovered that for sure, and I've also discovered that uh, a leader does not just follow 
the desires and the expectations of the follower. That's why he's a leader. So when I listen to people in Africa or in America argue that, that is, no, especially the people who are doing bad things, they will say, oh, that is what the people want. For example, they are showing pornography on television. They say, oh, that's what people want. You just give people what they want. Or, mm -hmm. uh, you know, people, politicians who are distributing money, mm -hmm. they say, oh, that's what people want. Mm -hmm. People want, that's why you're giving them. So they are trying to uh, remove the responsibility from themselves to people. But that means you are not the leader. Then why, you, are not, you cannot be a leader. Why are you there then? A leader is a person that is supposed to tell people what is right to do and is able to lead them in the right direction, not allowing them to drag him down and say that's what the people want. If I'm better informed, the people who are less informed should not be the people taking decisions for me who is better informed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put the order right. We are going to put them, but letting them know that you need this. But even if it is one person that will respond to pay the price first, by the time that person comes back with result, mm -hmm. Everybody would not be able to, nobody will be able to deny the result. That yes, even though they didn't give, because when you give them money first, they will disappear. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you will destroy the destiny you want to. Mm -hmm. You see, these people now we saw here, we don't, I don't give them money here, no. but we teach them to make money. Yeah. Yeah. That's much more better. I have one question. Um, Looking at the terrain of Africa, especially Ghana and Nigeria, I could say it's very, very difficult to find one person to trust. Yes. In terms of letting somebody be at the forefront. Is it in, in Ghana, the same Oh, yes. It wow. Is there. Okay. It's very, very difficult. Yeah. So to let all these things materialize back home, how, what plans have we put in place to counteract these challenges? That's why... Um, all the work I'm doing right now, all these daily broadcasts that I'm doing, all this video or YouTube recordings, they are not for now. Mm. People who, have, who are short-sighted or who don't know the DSA, they might be thinking that this thing I'm doing is for the people who are watching that 10 people or 20 people who are watching right now. <laughs> they don't know me. But what I'm doing right now is not for all of you even. Yeah. It's just you people are just lucky to be a forbearer because actually what I'm doing is that I'm foreseeing the fact that when I get to Africa, I'll be so busy. So I'm recording things ahead. Just at the same time, not when I'm recording, not waste the time, just also gaining, time. gaining people and, you know, get, getting results. So I'm spreading the kingdom while I'm recording. I'm actually, all these 6,000 videos you see on my, on my YouTube page, they are not for people who are watching them right now. Yeah. Because when I get to Nigeria, they, they, that I'm going to, they are going to be my resources that are going to be used to flood the whole country, radio. And they'll be right, just like you people are responding now, yeah. but you are responding in tens and, in, you know, dozens. But there, when it's all over millions, yes. it will be thousands of millions of people responding that God will be touching. Wow. And then those people, uh, we, we will do HMT, this kind of HMT we are doing right now, these are just miniatures. We are going to be doing for 1,000 people at a time. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be doing every week. Yeah. Wow. The nice yes. Mm -hmm. And then apart from that, we are also going to have uh, a center where we are going to have between, it depends on if I'm going to be able to find that. I'm going to have between 1,000 to 3,000 people ongoing HMT, the intense one, for a whole year. I will do that for three years. Yeah. HMT for a whole year. Then those ones that are studying, the 1,000 people that are studying there, uh, let's say 3,000 or 1,000, they will be picked from every local government in Nigeria and every state the, and then from Africa. So these people are going to be with me for one year living and so they are just changing their mindset totally. Then on weekends, they will be traveling to go and practice what they have learned yeah, from their yeah, picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, all over the city. So every weekend, they will be going dispatched to go and do the practical. And from Monday to Friday, they have it to Thursday, they are doing you know, training like this. Mm -hmm. And then that's it. from Friday to Monday, other people are coming in for HMT. Those ones who cannot live there, who are just so. Anyway, I'm just telling you my plans. So I'm going to have people discipled all the time. 
until I make them into these Ukrainians, like these Ukrainians that you see. They are going to be living the values of the kingdom. They're just like you came now for a week, but can you imagine you being there for a year to know all these principles? You know, so, and here we have already practiced them. Nobody can be under me for a year and not become, you know, phenomenon. You know, so they say we already have that, but they don't even live with me. They just they are around me. So, but but okay, you know, that's what we're, we're going to only use people with renew mind. If you don't want to go to the training, you don't want to read the books. You don't want to. You are not fit to be in our team. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> so some of those things are things are for the day. Yeah, those are some of my my own personal plans that I'm not, I don't, I'm not uh, exposing so much of right mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, so if there is no more, no caller and no more questions, well, I hope this will be a blessing to, okay, we have somebody talking still. Okay. Sorry, I was just going to say, um, follow up to the last um, comment you made. And for, start, for right? those who are, Going okay. to be undergoing this HMT. Yes. Would this, would this be it's okay. no. graduates, or you're happy to also go along with people who have just finished their SSC? Oh, so that if they I'm have getting people from fresh drug that way. addicts and al alcohol who, have, who don't even like he, he never read a book, you know, they, they were, don't talk less of being a graduate. Right. It, it, it is what we put in them. It, because the graduates, will, they will not be better than the people who are, yeah, yeah. by the time we finish putting things in them. Right. Because whatever gra uh, they got in university has not done anything for them no, anyway. Exactly. So it is what we put in them yeah. that is going to make them who they need to become. Yeah, right. right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Anybody? Just willing? Okay. Anybody willing? Also, sir, some of us that passed to the HMT here yes. in Europe, yes. can we be part of the team in Nigeria? Yes, because then you are the kind of people that will be playing the role of Mayo and Co here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You are going to be the people in the team that will be helping to set the whole thing up. <laughs> because you would live in Europe, you know the standards and the expectations. Yeah. And then you'll be here, you have read the books, so yeah, so you have an edge. Uh, you know, uh, you'll be part of the team that will help us to set everything up. Yeah, so let me make my normal announcement. If anybody is there that is watching us now and you know how to do PowerPoint, and you want to help us to do PowerPoint, we need people who could help us to do PowerPoint. Please just write in the comment section also that you can do PowerPoint and you'd like to help us. The next HMT is coming up in February, not in January as we had earlier thought. It's going to be from the 2nd to the 7th of February. So if you would like to come here for the next HMT, write to us right now to HMT at God Embassy, GodEmbassy.org. HMT at GodEmbassy.org. Or you could go to a, uh, HMT, I mean, DS, I think, is this under the larger blog slash HMT or something? Anyway, just write to HMT at godembassy.org. Uh, then we will get all the response and all the answers that you need. All right, you want to say something? Okay. Is everybody fine? Yeah. Okay. You want to talk? Yeah, you can give it. Thank you so much, DSA, for what you do. You you have done. Uh, it's it's mind blowing. Each time I go through, I've watched and listened to uh, a few of these. To a few how of these. How to change a nation? How to change a nation? I usually listen to it when I'm getting ready for for, for the church, <laughs> and, <laughs> and it's always mind blowing what uh, God has used you to do and is using you to do. Um, I have a passion for addicts for those who are addicted. And I've tried to be able to set up something, but I have not, because of working and doing all, all that what mm -hmm. I'm doing, I've not all been able to do yeah. yes. So, But my goal is to, I have, I'm coming up with a, a strategy to be able to reach out to uh, those that are addicted in the streets of Dallas Fort Worth. So um, I'll be reaching out to, I've talked with, um, Christina. With Pastor Natasha, Natasha and, okay. and uh, I'll be reaching out to them to be able to help me to see how I can implement this in in, in Yeah, Dallas we have forward. people who have studied from here who are if we implemented the same thing in New York, okay. in Atlanta, okay. in Sacramento, in uh, Los Angeles, okay. just all over the world, in Germany, 
in Sweden, in Finland. We have people who have, yeah, who have taken this experience and is working in other countries as well. Yeah. So what was maybe a hindrance for me? I wanted to have a center where I could maybe do We started direct. without a center. center. Yeah, that's we what started just by yeah. an individual yeah. meeting like this. Yeah. 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 Center will be fine, but yeah. if you don't have center, you have to make do with what you yes. have. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There is what, what we call daily cent, you know, yeah. this, you know just meeting. The ambulatory, yeah. Yeah, yes. Call it, yes. Yeah. Not stationary, but yeah. ambulatory, yeah. yeah. So those are some of the things that I've learned that I'm believing God to apply them as soon as I I hit my foot in Good. back in Dallas. Yeah. Good. So well you, you see so plans <laughs> are, you yeah. are you are getting yeah. plans together. You know, get your plans together, get the ideas together. How, how many of these have you done? Sorry? I uh, mean, similar to this, have you done the videos? These videos, I think eight or. Oh. Yeah, eight or ten. Okay, I didn't know. We have a, if you go to uh, Sunday Adelaide Official, uh -huh. that is my YouTube on YouTube. Uh -huh. Let me go there right now and show you. Okay. Sunday Adelaide Official, that is. Sunday Adelaide on YouTube. You go to the home page. Okay. Either you just go to Sunday Adelaide official and mm -hmm. write how to change a nation, then the series will come up. Will come up. Ah, okay. Yeah. Or you can go to Sunday Adelaide and go to the home page. Okay. If you press the home page, go down. You see, this is the home page here. Yeah. Keep on going down. You see the teachings first. These yeah. are the teachings. Okay. And then keep on going. After the HMT. Keep on going down. Okay, where is how to change a nation here? Under testimonials. Under testimonies? Yeah. Okay, you see, he knows. I don't even know. Oh, okay. okay, you have testimonies. Nineteen videos. Already nineteen? I thought okay. about ten. You've been busy. Wow, I didn't <laughs> notice it. Always. <laughs> oh, okay. Did you find it? Yeah, yeah. You, Chris has shown me. Okay. Yeah. Oh, how to change a nation. nation yeah. yeah. It comes under testimonials. Mm -hmm. oh, there yeah. are 19. So this will be 20. 20. This will make it 20, 20 videos. Yeah. Can you imagine there are 20 already? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So okay. how to change a nation. Yeah. I'll, I'll have to go it's the just road. under the teachings. Immediately after the teachings, yeah. you have how to change a nation. Oh. Or you, if you got, just go to YouTube and write Sunday Adelaide How to Change a Nation, the series will come up. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry? Is the program always what what time? Every, yeah, uh, it's, it's always Sunday. three o'clock Ukraine time, which is one o'clock uh, British time, I think. And uh two o'clock European time. Two o'clock Yeah. Central European time. Seven o'clock Eastern. Uh, seven o'clock Seven o'clock Texas time. Yeah. Okay, okay. But on su one Sunday a month I I miss it because I go to church to minister, but otherwise, uh, I'm every Sunday, yeah? Sunday. Every Sunday. All right, guys. I hope that uh, you've received something from this particular series on how to change a nation uh, through addiction. Uh, please go and share the message with your friends and family members. Share, share, share. Share the message. Tag people. And maybe it could be a blessing to somebody or maybe another person will have their own Natalia alcoholic that will become an apostle soon. Yeah. When the lady came to me, she was uh, 48 years old. Mm. Now she's 70 years old, 72 yeah. years old. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 48. Yeah, so she's one of my very first disciples. So thank you so much, everybody. We'll see you tonight. We'll have some time of fellowship with the, uh, with the visitors here that are, from, uh, that are here for HMT. Before they go, we'll still have another time, like yesterday. So those questions that we didn't finish answering yesterday, we'll try to answer them until, uh, unless uh, Chris Al comes up with another one. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
that will kill all the other questions. <laughs> the mother of questions. <laughs> the mother of questions. <laughs> so, see you guys. See you tonight at 7 o'clock Ukraine time, which is... Uh, uh, is it is five o'clock British time, right? That's in how many hours now? Two hours, three hours, two and a half hours, two and a half hours. So peace. <laughs>